Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, to my vlog. Hey, now what's going on? Why can't I? I can. So, here on the bench at the moment, we got a, one of these little LM1875. These chip amp. There we go, these little kits you can buy from AliExpress. I played around with a few of these, uh, you know, changing out the capacitors and stuff, and there was one that I got a slightly better performance on, but it was no good in 4 ohms. Uh, as was pointed out in the comments uh, by JAT, John Audio Tech, which he was absolutely right. You know, the man's a, he's a pro when it comes to this stuff. But I just play around sometimes, anyway. but this is just a straightforward kit. Okay, so uh, this is what you get from AliExpress. And uh, I've got it set up on the bench here. I've got 25 volts coming into it from over there on the over there on the power supply yep 25 volts coming in and we are connected up to an 8 ohm load i've built a little voltage probe you can see that yeah underneath there there's a oh no they're not that you can see them there they're uh, this is a voltage clamp there and this is basically an attenuator and it uh, attenuates minus 20 db so if i'm putting in 10 volts uh, it will actually be outputting into the auxiliary input of my um, measuring device it'll be outputting into that one volt and if it were 20 volts, it'd be 2 volts, and so on. And then it's clamped around about 3.5 volts, where it can't go any higher because of the diodes. So that's what we've got going on. Um, I'm still using my old cable, and I will get around to doing that about the cables and just showing you the difference when it comes into doing the calibrations and the difference on the cables. But what we've got here so far is this. So if we take a peek at the screen, I've already just run this and I've run it to, um, and got some averaging on it just to clear up the, the bottom of the lines here. And as you can see down here, we've got our RMS, it's uh, minus 3.5 dBFS. Uh, it's calibrated up to minus three, so I'm pretty much as close as I can get. And if I do go any lower than that, this particular chip, Alamo 75, will, um, it won't be happy and it, you know, we get about, about five and a half percent distortion. But just not quite peak, we've got 0.042% uh, distortion. We've got a nice, nice low noise floor, which I couldn't calculate before. And I'm gonna tell you the difference now is if you imagine that um, when I was doing them before, my noise floor there was 105 minus 105 dB. So if you look at this, this is like 100 and 120. Halfway there will be 110. And then we go a quarter way up, 105. So my noise floor was here. And this is the noise floor here, right? But my noise floor was around here. So I could only measure from the noise floor upwards. Anything underneath here was gone. It was noise because of the device I was using. So that's why this is a better uh, way of measuring because we get to see this without the noise so much, which means that when we're doing the measurements, uh, we get to see the THD and the noise isn't in there as much as you can, you know, as you can see there, we're pretty much equal on both of them. Um, Right, so yeah, so that's that. That's, uh, I mean, that, that's pretty good. Uh, do you know there is a way you can measure all this? You can work it out, you can do all the RMS values of these, all these peaks, and square them, RMS value, square, RMS value, square, and blah, 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 all the way down, and take all that, add it all together, square it again, and then you get close to working out mathematically what the THD is, but you read up on that and you just think to yourself, no, that's just too much. Well, at least that's what my brain tells me. It's too much, too much for the scope of things of what I'm trying to do anyway. And there's uh, there's great bits of kits and software that do it for you. So let's take a peek, uh, keeping all the same values. So I'm keeping the same volume level and everything, which is going to be at this minus 3.5 dB at first. And we'll look at the uh, frequency response. Just hit that. And here we go. 
So if I just shunt this, oops, wrong way. Shunt this down a bit. We get to see here um, the frequency response curve. Uh, so all the way up to 20K, we're good. Um, short that is why it's not such a nice line but at 1k we're coming in i can see here that um we're at minus 0 0.71 db down you can just see i mean all we want to do is just see that how it starts dropping off on the curve and we can see from the straight line from 100 hertz we're dropping down where are we at 70. um it's not too far if we look at this being sort of 0.7 yeah, there's 0 0.6 and there's 0 0.8. So we can look at this as being sort of 0 0.7 in the middle, maybe a little bit higher than 0 0.7. And then we get down to the 50 hertz. And we're at 0 0.8, so we've dropped off 0 0.1. Um, and then we're down here to 0.9, let's say. So we dropped off 0.2 there. And... Um, you know, I mean, again, we could go through the whole thing about the speakers again. Who's got the speakers to represent 20 hertz? This is just for two speakers, I think, about when I'm doing this sort of stuff. Left and right channels, stereo sound. So that's the LM1875 uh, kit. It doesn't, doesn't seem too bad at all. We can look at that again. Um, Over there, as so we're doing that, we can even turn this up quite a bit. Turn that up quite a bit. This should take some time doing that. I'll turn the averaging off. I'll go full pelt on it. Okay, and then I'll put the averaging on. And if I try to adjust the volume, so we go to 3.4, 3.3, you see how the, how the total harmonic distortion noise uh, comes in. So if I back that off to 2.1, see that's uh, 3. 3.2 dB of hertz, so we got 1.8. Back that down just a little bit, just so it's not on full blast. Uh, take that off. In actual fact, it's lower now, and that could be because we've um, got the averaging on and it's not being quick enough to measure it up. So let's just take that back up again to 6.5. I think that's where we were before, but we had something like that. 5.5, 5. 5. We were at 3.5, that's 3. All right, so that is basically giving it full wallop. 0.69%, we just back off slightly, not full wallop, 0.05. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Still pretty good for such a little tiny amplifier. We're sticking, uh, to the, get that, we're putting in uh, 821, 824 um, milliamps. So it's working, it's working quite hard. And let me just get rid of some of that noise there on there. And then just stop that off, take the pressure off it. And yeah, our first harmonic is, let's shift that across. Okay, that's the closest we're going to get. If you look at the numbers, go that goes up. But it's not as close to the um, two kilohertz, and that goes up. So I always choose, you know, as close as I can get. So that's minus seventy-two point five. Well, that's still, you know, that's pretty good. I mean, that is good, for especially for such a little tiny. You can see why some people really rave on about these chip amps because, I mean, that is good, isn't it? I mean, at three kilohertz, the uneven harmonic there is minus 87.23 dB. Uh, that's very, very good. Very, very good. Yeah, so all in all, I suppose you could say that, that um, just for that, for the total harmonic distortion, it's within spec of what they advertise. 
uh, it's on spec of what they advertise pretty much all right you know you, you drop down that extra uh, minus one uh, db against the uh, the fundamental signal going in there and you will find yourself climbing into distortion it's not the power supply because it's got plenty there it's only using you know, 850 milliamps and it could go up to 3.2 amps each side but it's not uh it is down to the, the the chip setup but still very good at 25 volts brilliant well that's it that's uh just wanted to show that again because before it didn't seem to fare so well but again you know that was because we were limited on the resolution and um, from what we could actually see from that we've got much better noise floor now much lower and we get to see uh, much better thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next one